that you get my PE classes to be this quiet and attention would be great. So we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So first of all, if you have family members that are not attending, that could not make it, if you'll go to our website, thetainingschool.org, uh, and there'll be a pop-up link for our YouTube, and tonight's event is being streamed on YouTube Live. So again, you just text anybody at home or anybody out of state that couldn't make it down tonight, go to our, go to our main homepage website. There should be a pop-up that comes up with the YouTube, and you'll be able to watch it from anywhere uh, live at that time. So uh, feel free to get your phones out and text whoever and let them know at this time. That'd be great. We don't want anybody to miss it. We are streaming, right? Good. <laughs> I don't want my phone to blow up. I thought you said it was streaming. Well, hey, let's start with, uh, let's go ahead and have every athlete, if you're an athlete in the room tonight, stand up. Go ahead and stand up, athlete. Very good. Go ahead. Go Stormers, right? Go Stormers. All right. You go ahead and sit down. We won't have you stand the entire time. Wow. You know, this is, it's, it's such an exciting night, you know, to be able to come here and stand in front of you and, and celebrate our annual award celebration uh, and celebrate our athletes and all the hard work and the dedication and everything they've done with their achievements throughout the year. And that's the purpose of tonight. We're here for one reason, and it's to celebrate our student athletes. And um, if we come together, you know, I hope we can reflect on the amount of time and hours that these kids spend every week. The dedication of practice, the dedication of games, missing social events, sometimes having to get up early, getting home late. Last night, I got home at like 9.30 or 10. We're back up at school this morning. I was looking at uh, kind of the average athlete spends at Thayden 100 hours a month in athletics. 100 hours a month outside of the normal school day, either in practice, games, or whatever. Now that's not including if we have a weekend event, we're traveling, an overnight, you know, a night event that goes all day Saturday, all day Sunday. That's just your average week. Why would you do that? Because you love it. You love sports, you love faith, you love your teammates, and that's why you're here. And that's what we're here to celebrate today, is you and all the dedication, everything you've done to bring pride to our school and excellence to our school. Now, enough about me, enough talking about this, no one came to listen to me. We came here to celebrate you tonight, correct? Came here to celebrate the athletes. So we're going to start off with our reflections, and we're going to begin with Ms. Madison that's going to join us. And she's going to kick us off tonight with uh, Cross Country. Thank you. When Hadley and I first went to state our sophomore year, 
The girls team was just Hadley and I. This year we had a full team. And so I want to thank all of you guys who have joined our girls cross country team and who came to state. And then I do want to say, well, the number change is less jarring for our boys team. You guys have turned into a true team and you guys are making each other better. And that's also a feat. We have gotten faster because we have a competitive team that wants to make each other better. And I do want to give kind of a highlight of the season. I have been lucky enough to watch Ben and Gabi race each other for the last two seasons. They've been maybe two or three seconds apart. And you were never quite sure who was going to win. I will say, Gabi did come up on top at State this year. But that's kind of this, that's what I'm talking about when I say we're making each other better. I also want to say we got glitter this season. This was our first season of glitter because we, our first run was a glow run at NWAC. And so we got in glow paint and then Hadley brought us glitter. And so we just, we ran with that. I'm sure that you guys appreciate my pun. <laughs> but we ran with that and it was just great. And so we got glitter, we got ribbons. We really kind of formed pre-race rituals and that was also a new one. And I do want to give individual accolades because this sport is hard. You, long distance is hard. It's mental, it's physical, all of it is just hard. And so I feel very lucky to be able to share those. So I want to kind of give you a brief highlight reel of our 2023 season. So our boys team won third place in state. That's the highest we've ever gotten. <laughs> enjoyable with 
his immense enthusiasm and energy. Um, offering his reflections on Faith's first Tennessee season is the inimitable Cooper Neal. tennis team is up on this stage. <laughs> so our season was a very short one, you know, being pulled together before school even started. I'm very glad to have spent the six weeks or so with my fellow teammates. I'd really like to thank Sterling, me here, and April, who came along as co-seniors to really help foster the environment of such a younger crowd that we had. You know, though we started in the middle of summer, we rallied together a really good group, making 20 of us in total, most of the 9th and 10th graders, as you can see up here. Uh, I'd like to start by you know, kind of thanking some people. I'd like to thank Coach Hooper and Dr. Willen, uh, as long, uh, along with our Shadow Valley uh, coach, coach and the facilities we were able to use there. Um, they really poured a lot of time into our inaugural season and helping foster skills that are going to last these 9th and 10th graders well up to their senior year. Uh, a memorable moment I'd like to bring up from the season is always our scrimmages. Every practice would end in a very heated, heated scrimmage. Coach will, coach will probably deny this, but in one scrimmage, Octavio and I were at his throat, but he ended up beating us. <laughs> we'll not live that down. Um, practices would never be complete without ending in a game of king of the court. Think knockout or around the world, but for tennis. Usually these games move very fast, and chaos would often ensue. Eventually, it comes down to the last two players. Usually, that would be Izzy, Octavio, Ezra, or me against Coach. And the good news is, also Coach, we always won. Always won. Some of the highlights from this season uh, would be our matches at Lifeway Christian at the Kingston Tennis Courts and our district tournament in Fort Smith. Lifeway was a really strong team, even though we played some really good matches and prevailed on a couple of them, especially on our girls' side. Uh, for the most of the team, this was our first competitive tennis match. And, you know, all those King of the Court games really prepared us. <laughs> As we moved into district tournament, we had a remarkable first round, where we won five out of our six first round matches. And except for a terrible line call, we really bagged in our second round victories. Excited to come back and reminisce with these ninth and tenth graders who are the future of the sport that is just now being fostered. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you guys for being here tonight. I'm Michaela Carroll, the head coach of the volleyball team, and I'm pleased to introduce Kate Tindall.
and our ability to work together. And it is a privilege to compete with my teammates. Yet, yeah, there are two people that this team would not be possible without. Coach Carol and Coach Chu. Together, you have guided us in the pursuit of excellence and character. So join me, please, and thank you. Before I hand it 
enough to our speaker tonight, I just want to express my gratitude for a few folks that make a very grueling basketball season possible. First of all, I want to thank Scott Passmore, who came here and injected his energy into this program, and he is a source of positivity for everyone on this campus. I can't speak more highly of him. He even was an assistant coach for our team for several months leading into the season. Amanda Milliken, she is the program director. She makes everything run here. The gears would not turn without her. Um, Carla Martinez, Michael Duden, and Tony Sagely drove our buses this year. They're so important to us. Tony Sagely might not be able to coach very well anymore, but he can sure drive a bus. Uh, is he here? He's not here. Um, oh, he's watching over there. Um, and I would also like to thank the players and parents. Uh, in particular, Jeff Ramey, Ken Henson, and Liz Anderson. They worked the table for almost every home game. And they were even, even were complimented by a group of officials saying, you guys have the best table we've had all year. So thank you for being excellent and allowing our athletes to follow your suit. Um, and to my players, this is the first team I've ever had that had less than 10 players, which means in practice, things were challenging. It's not easy with eight players to uh, make things game-like, but they worked hard. We had some of the lowest lows we've had in the program, and then we rose out of that. And we had some of the highest highs that we've had as well. And lastly, but most importantly, I want to thank my assistant this year, Coach Cameron Wood, um, and his family for sharing their time with the Thayden basketball program. I improved so much as a coach because Coach Wood's influence, and I know the boys really appreciated his influence as well. So, without further ado, Jack Henson into the stage. about our team this year and judge in a negative light, claim that we weren't super successful this year. In some respects, they wouldn't be totally wrong. This year, like Coach mentioned, we had the smallest varsity team not only in Thayden history but in our conference as well. We had the fewest numbers of seniors on any Thayden team as well as the overall, overall youngest Thayden team. Yet, in so many other ways, we were incredibly successful. Stats-wise, not only did we have our best record in the last few years, but we also had more total points by a large number, more rebounds, a much higher field goal percentage, and even twice as many assists as the season before. This year, we were closer than any Thayden basketball team in the past and helped each other thrive both on and off the court. And our low numbers, while challenging on the court, bonded us off the court. To touch more on that, it's hard to put into words just how challenging it is to wholeheartedly play an entire game without the relief of the bench, as so many of us did. You look over at the other team's bench, and it's so full that sometimes they even have players sitting on the ground because there aren't enough chairs to accommodate each substitute. to. You can't help but wonder what that would be like as you're exhausted and oftentimes ready to quit. And yet, no matter the score, our team continually put in 100% effort for every minute of the game, and we were so, so much better for it. Emory and I, even though he couldn't be here tonight, uh, we were both so proud to be uh, y'all's captains this year, and we greatly enjoyed playing on the team. Uh, we both agreed that we grew a lot from it. Um, we just want to say we love all y'all, and uh, I personally can't wait to see y'all playing together in the future seasons. Um, again, like Coach Bauer mentioned, special thanks to Coach Passmore, who really helped us out this year, and Coach Wood and Mac. Um, they don't get the credit or the praise that they deserve, but they put it. Um, the hours just like we did. Um, they were ready to show up to practice every day just like we were. Um, and they really helped us out. Um, and then we actually just have one last thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Coach Bauer is unfortunately uh, leaving us um, this offseason. He's taking a job at his alma mater, Rita Springs. But we do have a gift for him just to express our gratitude to him. Um, Coach Bauer, if you want to come up here and join me here. Passmore was able to snag one of the basketballs from NAO. <laughs> uh, the Barn Stormer Athletic logo on it. We all signed it, wrote some notes. Um, Coach, you mean the world to us. We appreciate you. Um, this program wouldn't be 
the, the shape that it is right now if it wasn't for you and all the effort and um, hard work that you put in. Um, so thank you. Uh, we love you. Uh, we wish you the best on your endeavors. And we're going to be ready for that Eureka Springs game next year. So. <laughs> Many Instagram posts were made that night. 
We all screamed and hugged in the locker room, and we kissed. We each kissed the trophy. <laughs> At that moment, we all knew we had made it. Despite our rough start, we persevered and pushed through, finding our chemistry together on and off the court. The hours spent before and after practice, on the way to and from games, we spent growing close and creating friendships. We all love each other very much, and leaving this team next year absolutely precious me. This team has meant everything to me. This is the best group of girls out there, and there isn't anyone I would rather play with. There isn't a thing I wouldn't do to support and encourage each and every one of them. And to be frank, a big reason I play soccer is so that I can still see their faces at practices and games every day. <laughs> Basketball gave all of us the ability to become friends with people years older and years younger than us, and it opened up so many other doors and connections for each of us. This basketball team is filled with so many bright, passionate, amazingly talented young women who I can say confidently will go on to do amazing things, whether that is basketball related or academic related. I am so thankful I have the opportunity to play with each and every one of you. You are all a second family to me, and for that I am so grateful and so proud of us for this season. And finally, where would we be without Coach Sageley? She started the basketball program with us in seventh grade, and she's the driving force behind such tremendous growth and success in this program. She's the best of both worlds, supportive, funny, and caring, but also tough, and she pushes us to be our best selves on and off the court. And I can honestly say that I wouldn't be the person I am today without her guidance. Thank you. this year, so we had 70 people in the program. <coughs> so I'd just like to thank all of the volunteer parents that came to help us. Um, and especially it was led up by Mike Bivolo, who was our lead coach for Nike. So thank you to all the parents. <laughs> some other people may not have, is that uh, Avery, who came up to speak for NICA, she is two-time NICA Varsity State Champion. <laughs> and for Bramble, um, we are the only team, we are the only school that has a Bramble team in the country. And to come up and speak about that uh, is our very own Laura Malia, who was first place in Gravel World. Team 
teammates raced that day and achieved much more than a spot on the podium. As her coach Jess Robson stated in her letter to the team after the race's conclusion, we all have a different story to tell and different struggles to overcome. All that to say, gravel is a very demanding sport. It can be tough to push on, and although you may have trained as hard as you possibly can, supplied yourself with the right equipment, and executed your nutrition perfectly, things can still go wrong. I know myself. <laughs> but the sport also provides moments of joy. Like when Coach Jess hit Easter-themed snack bags for the team to pick up as we were on a gravel ride near the Missouri border. It provides an opportunity to connect with others of all ages and grades, and an opportunity to be both a mentor and a mentee. As our team looks forward to our last two races, Gravelicious, our target race, and Unbound Gravel, I want to I want to center what's at the heart of the thing the Gravel team, our beginnings. It can be too easy to forget where it all started, and as such, I want to take a moment to recognize one of the core members of Faded Cycle, Dr. Hirschbach. I don't know if she's in the room right now. Her initiative in kickstarting and gravity, the first of its kind in the nation, and inspiring me to start riding gravel, exemplifies what Faded Cycling and Faded Athletics are all about. It's not all about race results or achieving a certain FTP. It's about the connections we make with others and the bridges we build to the local community. I want to conclude by saying this. Faith and Gravel is not just a cycling team, but a cycling family. As I enter my senior year at Faith, I grow increasingly grateful for the community in our school cycling department. I know that the culture of Dr. Hirschbach, Coach Nick, Coach Jess, Coach Milligan, and so many more others have helped foster will continue to impact the next generation of barn servers. Thank you. Hello, I'm John Marshall. I'm the head boys and girls soccer coach. I want to recognize uh, our assistant coaches, Sarah Sageley and Coach Nate Weston. <laughs> We still have some hard games uh, ahead of us. I uh, hope you can hope you can join us next Tuesday for our home game. Uh, it's going to be a very important game for us to, to win. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce two seniors, uh, Mahir Doshi and Abby Curtis.
Um, my name is Abby Curtis, and I've had the privilege to be part of the Thin Soccer program since my freshman year. I stand here now as a senior, wrapping up my final season. Sadly. When I first joined this program, it was an intramural sport that I really was not interested in. <laughs> I played that first season as a very weak defender, only showing up for a peak credit. <laughs> my sophomore season, however, they engaged a remarkable, talented coach, Coach John Marshall. Despite our very small roster of only 13 girls, we began competing as a part of the 3A West Conference, oftentimes playing games with only three girls on the field. Or not three girls, nine girls. <laughs> <laughs> the season was tough, but necessary, as with the help of Coach Marshall, we learned resilience, a skill that will take us far in all of our careers. I'm also very thankful for that season because that was the year, two weeks before our first game, I decided to become the goalkeeper, a position I continued to play and really well. Last season, my junior, junior season, was by far one of our best. Our team gained nearly half of the girls' basketball team after their season was over. <laughs> this took our roster from 13 girls to over 20, yet it was not just our numbers that grew, but our skill as well. The team made it to, state, to the state tournament for the second time and played a rainy, muddy, and exceptionally fun game. Of course, we celebrated by sliding in the mud and riding home smelling like wet dogs. <laughs> Finally, my senior season. While it isn't over yet, we've undergone such incredible growth. We continue to gain new players and even a new, yet familiar coach, Coach Sigley. I couldn't have asked for a better team or better coaches to play my final season with. I've heard people say that goalkeeper is the best position because you get a view of the entire game and all the players. While goalkeeper is the perfect position for a good view of the game, it's an even better position for watching your teammates support each other and lift each other up. Watching the soccer program grow from a small 13-girl team to a fully supported one has been one of my favorite experiences by far. I speak for all of my team when I say I felt sincerely supported and loved by this team since the very beginning, and that's something I'll be forever grateful for. As I conclude my time here, I want to thank my coaches, Coach Marshall and Coach Sagely, for always pushing me to be better, even on the days I really didn't want to, and for giving me such a tremendous amount of support. Thank you, Valeria, for bravely leading our team since your freshman year and for welcoming me into the position of co-captain this year. Thank you to all of my teammates for reminding me that everything is a team effort and that you'll always have my back no matter what. Thank you to my parents for supporting me through this journey, even if you don't know a lot about soccer. <laughs> and finally, thank you to my fellow goalkeeper, Lily Kate Caldwell. I never knew that someone so much younger than me could teach me so much. Thank you. Hi there, uh, me again. <laughs> and it's me again because uh, this is the first year now that we have cycling throughout the school year uh, with multiple programs. Uh, and that's thanks to great support from Mr. Passmore. Uh, the cycling's really taken off here. Um, with that, one of the new programs that was introduced was Enduro. And Enduro is a more technical sport, um, harder descents, where you still have to pedal up climbs, but you're only timed on the descent, and then you have to pedal to the next one. Uh, to speak about this, we have Luke Raymond.
first year that they suffered in Durham, like Coach Nick said. And the coaching and the resources that we have received this year are incredible. We have focused on many different skills every week, and our coaches have taught us where and how to apply them when we are on the trail. On Tuesdays, we focus on learning a skill, so we go to a close environment so we can learn proper techniques and receive feedback from our coaches. In cycling, it's important to take our time learning skills so we are safer further down the line. These skills just don't apply to Enduro, but to Nika and Grapple as well. One week, we are practicing manuals, which is balancing on your rear, rear wheel. We went down a paved trail on Slaughter Pen, uh, which is our local trail system about a mile that way. Our coaches gave us feedback and guided us through the skills step by step. During our Thursday practices, we go on longer rides and apply what we learned during the previous practice. We would also talk about line choice because not every trail has a clear line that is faster. Everyone is different, and one line might be faster for one person than another. It can also depend on what condition the trail is in. If it is wet outside, for example, a different line may have more grip than the line you would usually take. There are so many factors that influence, with, influence which path is right for you, so you need to be mindful of them and know what to do in different scenarios. This reflects back into our personal life, where we should always be open to new ideas, or a different path because the circumstances are different. There isn't always a clear way, so we need to be able to adapt to our surroundings to make it through. As students in Durham program continues and I enter my sophomore year, I cannot wait to meet new team members, engage in practice, and learn more about this beautiful, beautiful sport. Thank you.
while I am always nearly last in my event, they are continuously pushing me to improve while simultaneously encouraging my growth. It is these aspects that make me love running. I love my teammates, I love my coaches, and I am ever so grateful for their ongoing support of me athletically, academically, and emotionally. We started tonight with to talking about being in athletics and the hard work and the dedication. Remember I said, why in the world would anybody want to do that? I think they did a pretty good job telling us why. And, and represented your program and represented things, so I appreciate it very much. We're going to move on to our special awards and honors. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Miss Amanda Milliken, and she's going to lead us through this. And as we go through all of our special honors. Thank you. All right. I'm going to proceed through a couple slides at a time. When you see your name up on a slide, if you'll join coaches over that direction so that we can kind of keep the show rolling. Awesome. So, um, I'd first like to recognize Azima Fani. He is being recognized for his 2023 Lifetime Little Sugar Mountain Bike Classic, coming in first place. <laughs> he is also being recognized for his latest endeavor at the 2024 Mid-South 50 Mile, earning fourth place. Edmund Niederman has earned the 
first place. I know that he had another event, so he will probably be coming later. Sorry. nominations 
and responses for our athletes this year uh, at Thayden is the Barnstormer Barn Award. Uh, the committee, we had 12 individuals on the committee. We sat down and went through every one of those nominations and discussed each individual on that list. And from there, we took that, that list with the leadership team as well, and it consisted of, you know, again, of our head coaches. And we had multiple votes, and we narrowed it down to two individuals that will be our Stormer Award recipients this year. And at this time, I would like to welcome Dr. Marsh to the stage, and he's going to go over our Stormer, Stormer Award. Thank you. Thank you, Scott, Mr. Passport. Um, before we uh, announce our finalists and uh, the ultimate recipients of the Stormer Award, uh, I, I want to just offer a few words of thanks. Uh, as you may recall, or maybe you tried to forget, last year at this time I was serving as the interim director of athletics. What a, what a, <laughs> I know it was scary for all of you. Um, what a difference a year makes. And um, since Scott has joined our team, uh, we have just seen a surge of new life and energy, uh, expertise, leadership uh, in our program. I cannot say enough good things about Mr. Passmore and all that he has done to get this program moving forward. So please, let's give a big round. district school program to come in here into the heart of the Thayden School community and the way you've connected, I think, with coaches, family, students on a very personal level. It's clear that you're really all about the mission and the learning and a, and a consummate team player, so thank you. Um, I also want to acknowledge again and recognize again uh, Coach Bauer, um, multi-talented, National, uh, you know, singing the anthem, playing the mandolin, but working with these students, caring about them so much in terms of their whole development as people, right, front and center. Um, and Nick, you, you came in and uh, held that program together in the toughest of times with the pandemic, you know, and, and I think all of our coaches have done so much to keep these programs growing, and moving forward, and getting stronger, um, and Coach Bauer, you really exemplify that desire to keep the program going and moving and getting a little stronger every day. Um, so thank you to Coach Bauer. <laughs> and really, finally, I mean, I, I've been kind of hogging the mic a lot these days, but uh, to all of you, um, you know, together we fly, together we build an athletic program um, you know coach Stevens your point about the six to one ratio and the amount of parent volunteers needed to keep that program growing and it is growing uh, but in so many other ways the scorers table just getting the parents and making those trips those endless trips to AAO all that our families do to support our student athletes all the, the co my colleagues on the faculty do to go to games all of the coaches the long long hours i must say my interim spell as director of athletics was <laughs> eye-opening um, and it, it really is uh, i think you began scott by noting the amount of time that uh, everybody is investing in this it's truly tremendous so thank you all of you for for bringing this program to life um, on so many levels and often um, out of sight, you know, thankless hours. Um, it's inspiring. And our student presenters tonight, you were outstanding, really. Just beautiful. <laughs> was established, I think, only four years ago with our first graduating class, the class of 21. And um, it is, uh, it's a special award that's designed to recognize student athletes who exemplify our core values uh, as a school, as a program, 
Char we talk a lot about character, unity, and excellence. Uh, and uh, tonight we have uh, 10 finalists. Uh, Mr. Pass will talk a little bit about the process and the large and broad input that we um, received of the long and thoughtful deliberations of the, the coaches and, and, and staff members uh, that formed the committee. And when they brought to me not just the list, not just the two uh, ultimate uh, recipients tonight, but all 10 of the finalists, it was clear that we had those characteristics, those qualities here in abundance. So we want to recognize each of the 10 finalists by calling them out. Our first finalist, Hadley Ayers, a senior. Laura Bailey. And that's Laura, well, that was a great shout out to Dr. Hirschbach. I mean, that program was hanging by a thread, the gravel, and, and Dr. Hirschbach was key in keeping that going. Another senior, Jack Henson. Just dedication to academic, I mean, to, to athletic 
uh, success and achievement and excellence, uh, and, and also academically, uh, also very, very high levels of commitment uh, and, and dedication. Um, but I think everyone will recognize uh, when I announce uh, the winner, this is a student who exemplifies in particular um, unity. This student is a unifier. And one of the things that impressed me with many of the remarks is how the student athlete presenters focus on the way sports bring people together, the way teams connect, even if it's a long, lonely ride on a gravel road, the, the cycling family, the connection, Laura, that you were talking about. Um, this is a student who has that power to bring people together, who goes to sports um, outside of his particular domain and interest to cheer for everyone. This person, true barnstormer, true unifier, true sort of uh, force of positivity and life that every team needs to succeed and who lifts everyone up by virtue of that, that optimism, that determination, perseverance in the face of setback and adversity. And this student athlete is Jack Henson.